Hey y'all. I hope y'all are so ready for Christmas 2020. Whew, it has been a year, hasn't it? So I am in the Christmas spirit. Sometimes it takes me a bit and Emily's always gung-ho. But this year, I said, you know what? It's several weeks ago. I said, you know what? Put the tree up. It's fine. And I'm so glad. I love all the twinkling lights, especially when the lights are off in the house. It's just, uh, it's just so warm and cheerful. So I hope that y'all are getting in the Christmas spirit too. Just enjoy it. Embrace it this year. Uh, even if you can't afford presents or anything like that. You know what? That's not what it's about anyway. Just enjoy your family good food, friends, all those things, and um, remember what it's really about, which is the birth of our Savior. Um, so anyway, I got to thinking I wanted to take you guys around the farm, and I got to thinking, do y'all even know how many pigs we have right now? I'm not sure if I've shared that. I've got a cat down here at my feet. Hey, Mama. Hey. Hey, you've been rolling in something dirty. You're dirty. So I am gonna go check all these pigs. Thought I'd take you along with me. Who doesn't love pigs? We got pigs, mama pigs, daddy pigs, teenager pigs, piglets. We've got all sizes and varieties. Here is a good picture of the babies. Let me show you. So there is the mama. We'll try to get closer for you guys to see the babies. They're growing like crazy. She's not really a fan of people being around her babies. So you can see the babies are doing awesome. I actually castrated them myself this time when Ben wasn't even home. And that's always scary to me. Uh, we do that for a variety of reasons because we're raising meat for people. Uh, but we also left one uncut this time and he's the one we've showed you before he's covered in spots he's really good looking and so uh, we have some people interested in him as a breeder so uh, anyway that that's coming that we are moving in a direction to where we now that we have dot which i'm about to go back and check on them we can have unrelated pairs to sell as breeding pairs of old spots so that's really exciting because there are people looking for them they're a bit hard to find so i um, really excited that we're going to be able to offer that here in the future and that is him right there so i'm walking around but in reality this next batch is in the pen really right next door to the babies and the mama that mama that had those we call her big mama that's her name it's always been what we've called her the other mama her name is short tail um you know we ask you guys what to name her and i just couldn't break the habit of calling her short tail it's just kind of stuck ben wanted to call her pokey and call him pokey dot that's what he wanted to call him but i can't break the short tail habit so anyway next door to big mama we have got a group and there they are Oh, y'all are so cute. Y'all are so cute. Hey, we like to eat. We eat like pigs. Hey! Hey! Yeah. Y'all want me to pick you something? You want a snack? I showed y'all on the last video picking some of those radishes. That's actually our ground cover um, that we're using to rebuild the soil in our garden. Um, and I showed you picking some of those for our supper. Well, I'm not the only one that likes them. These pigs love them. And you can see they met me at the gate. They're waiting for a little snack each afternoon. So we bought most of this group. There is two old spots. Looks like they're over there taking a nap. But you can see how much this group has grown. Look how huge this one is. And those hernias that were on them when we first bought them, they have actually gotten a lot better. You can see, you can barely even see his 
uh, and it was huge when we got them. So uh, they are growing off really well, but about a week or two ago, it was a different story. We had a major problem out of this group. So I've told y'all before that if you raise pigs, if you're new to pigs, that you need to be watching out for pneumonia. It's really the only thing we've ever, besides a few other little freak accident things we've had with pigs, it's really the only thing we've ever dealt with with pigs. They're susceptible to it, especially if they get really cold or wet and cold, uh, if you're transporting them in the rain, things like that. Well, I've had people contact me and say, how do you know that that's what's going on? What are you looking for? Well, pigs are just like any other animal. My first thing I always look for is a change in behavior. So if I'm going out to feed them, you see Lane getting his laundry. If I'm going out to feed them and I notice one of them is not coming up to eat, that's my first clue that I better investigate further. And then if I go find them and they're laid off by themselves, just acting lethargic or uh, shivering or something like that, then I start to think, okay, we really do have a problem. Sometimes they can simply be laid off by themselves because they're sleeping. So just because they're doing that doesn't mean you have a problem, but it is your first clue that you better check it out further. So a couple weeks ago, that started happening a little bit with those pigs, those weaning pigs, we call them the teenagers. And um, so I started investigating, Emily started paying really close attention, and we started hearing some coughing. And a few days later, the coughing was severe in a couple of them. So we do not do preventative antibiotics here on our farm. It's just something we've committed to. We just don't do it. So they don't get antibiotics on a daily basis in their feed or anything like that. And we only treat who is ill. We don't go in just because one is coughing and treat the whole bunch. We just don't do things that way. Uh, we start paying attention and watching and monitoring. Uh, and that's what we did. And we were able to, we only wind up having a, a very few cases. There's 17 piglets out there. And I think we only wind up having like three or four cases. So that was a pretty relatively small number when it is contagious and it can spread. But if you just stay on top of it and get rid of it, then you're less likely for it to just spread throughout your whole herd. And then I told y'all we went camping on the last video. And I also told you that if things are gonna happen, it's gonna happen when we try to go somewhere or especially when Ben tries to go somewhere. So on top of all that, piglets sick we have just weaned 34 beef calves they're right out here next to the house in my milk pen uh, in fact some of them are looking at me right now and right about the same time we noticed a couple of them not eating and starting to cough you can see some of them laid down now uh, and off by themselves but some of them are just resting some of them are standing their ears are all up everyone looks good i've been keeping an eye on everyone every single day and this group has pulled through doing great but there was a few days there they weren't doing so hot they started to get what we were afraid was the beginning of shipping fever we've talked to you guys about that before also called pasturella and it's very common especially once cows or calves uh, really calves mainly but once they've been stressed if you get them up and wean them or vaccinate them or um, you buy some from another farm we had a huge outbreak of it of the stress of getting them moved here which was only a few miles down the road but it just doesn't take much and then you better be watching because eight days later is when they will come down with it and it presents itself it is basically pneumonia so uh that will go down quick on you and die and it's very costly and it's just something I don't want to let happen to an animal in my care. So thankfully this time we did not have a big outbreak. Uh, we kept a close eye and we heard a little bit of coughing but nothing major and uh, but it was a tense stressful couple days because any type of sickness like that can get bad in a hurry. So that little group is getting their second round of shots this weekend, and then they will get moved out to a big pasture, lots of room to roam, um, and we will be raising those up. Uh, we could sell them right now and make a profit off of them, or we can keep them and raise them for probably about 
another year and then we can turn them into beef for people so that's the plan they're gonna go out into the big pasture where there's already about six steers out there there'll be 40 total plus miracles and marvels when they move out there we'll have a group of 42 super super excited about that it's been a long time coming and I feel like we're finally almost there to where when people call and say hey do you have a roast I can buy do you have um, ribs all these kind of things we can finally say yes we do come on come fill your freezer so that's we're really looking forward to that aren't you precious oh man So before I leave the pneumonia subject, you might be thinking, well, why is all that happening right now? Well, here in Arkansas, as well as a lot of other places in the country, over the last few days, the weather has literally plummeted. Um, and over the past few weeks, it's just, it's rained, it's been damp and really cold. And that just is a perfect conditions, especially for a pig to get sick. And then the calves as well, um, they've had the stress of being weaned off mom as well as the weather. And just like us, we will get some sinus trouble when the weather changes. They do the same thing. They're just more susceptible. So it's something you just need to be aware of, on top of, and just watching every day. When you're feeding and you see little changes, those are your clues that you've got to, um, you might have a problem. So anyway, that's just what we've learned over the years of brushing stuff off and going on, and you'll lose animals that way. They're short tail. Hey girl, what's he doing? She is looking good, real good. She's had her babies wean. They're out with the what I call the teenagers. She'll be having another litter sometime after the first of the year sometime. She's doing good. She's a good looking girl. I like how she's real trim. You can see her belly doesn't drag the ground. She's about what I like to keep for a breeder. She's not super duper thin. I don't like that personally, but she's not big and um, huge to where it's hard on her to have piglets either. And there comes Big Daddy. Hey, Big Daddy. Yeah. Of course, our boar is deaf. We've told you that before. So he doesn't always come up when she does. But they are wanting a snack, aren't you? All right, you talked me into it. All right, so if you're keeping up, that's a mama and seven babies, short tail and big daddy, and then there's 17 up front, so. You can do the math. That's how many pigs so far. Let's go check out the last little group. And one other thing I wanted to mention, one really exciting change we've made here on the farm, just here in the last month, really. Um, this is how our farm started out and then circumstances changed and we couldn't do this anymore, but we're back to it. So what it is, is when we first started, we had our feed brought in from a Mennonite farm. Um, just up in Missouri and then things changed with farms around us and we were told that they could no longer bring it down because there wasn't enough people getting it but just recently we have found out they are bringing feed to our area again so we are completely feeding non-gmo feed again we're super excited about that that's a change we've wanted to make especially for our animals that are going to be processed for meat. So they are now eating completely non-GMO from a Mennonite farm. It's not certified organic, but if you know the Amish and Mennonite, they pretty much were the original people for organic anyway. So um, I feel like it's organically raised, maybe not certified, but in my opinion, sometimes organic is just a expensive certification, if you know what I mean. So um, the non-GMO though is something we are completely sold on and really excited to, to have that feed. I am losing light quickly, but I wanna show you the last pigs here at VW Family Farm. It is a beautiful evening. I'm back here at the woods 
Um, these pigs back here have the life and they're gonna come out and see us over here. Oh, these are our last four. And you can see Dot over there, that's Dot right there. He is doing so good, he's caught up with these. If you remember back when we got him, these were quite a bit bigger than him, but he has grown like crazy. So the rest of these are set to be processed in January. Um, they are growing off really good. They were smaller when we took the last batch. That's why they're still here. Um, that's the three we kept to go in January. And they are looking good. Love those, love those ears. Y'all are so cute. You can see Dot's doing awesome. Dot will not be by himself. He's looking at us there. Uh, those 17 up front are actually going to move back here with him, but we didn't want to do that and take a chance on these three getting sick and then having to possibly medicate them with something. That was just not something we wanted to do right here before they go to be processed. So Dot will be living with that big group that's up at the house right now. So if you're counting, we have 31 pigs right now. It's a lot. I'm not going to say it's the most we've ever had. I've fed out quite a few pigs in the past eight years or so that we've had these old spots, but um, it's right up there. That's a lot. So before it's dark, I'm going to head up and give those uh, weaned calves a snack. Check them out. So let's head up there before we lose all the light. And they are waiting on me. That's the one I keep my eye on. It's a Jersey Bull, and you never want to turn your back on one of those. And there's Miss Miracle. Y'all ready for a snack? Yeah. So I am hopping off here. I am losing light quickly. Thanks for hanging out with me and spending a few minutes. So that's how many we have, 31 pigs. And I haven't counted up the cows lately, although I have a running total uh, at the house, but I think it's something up around maybe 110, 120, something like that. Um, and like I said, we'll be keeping these calves for a while, raising them out. Really excited about that. Life is just good. Even though times can be stressful, life is good we love this farm life we love you guys sharing it with us and we will see you guys on the next one stay safe remember to bless others when you're given the opportunity just remember to take a few minutes every day and just enjoy the season we'll see you guys on the next one god bless